Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Comic Shop Talk on the Late Night Collectors community. I'm your host, Nico, and joining with me today, as always, is my co-host, Chris. How you doing, man? Hey, not too bad. How's everybody? Or how are you? I mean, I you know, I'm doing a lot better after that Leafs win last night that we went out to watch, man. Fucking go Leafs go, 7-2. to two. Good job, Leafs. I got to put that on the record here right now, because no matter what happens moving forward, we're in a good spot right now. That was a- That's it. We got, we got one game out of the series here, at least, you know? Exactly. It was a pretty, well, we go. pretty kick-ass game. So, yeah, no, go Leafs go. Let's see it happen. Speaking of hockey, guys, uh, here on the Late Night Collectors community, we also do other shows as well. We, we do a show called Crack and Packs with the Chat. I believe we will be uh, having some upcoming episodes with some hockey card opening uh, happening on there. So a little kind of plug to that show. Check out the playlist, guys. Uh, we open up uh, all kinds of other cards on there, too. Pokemon cards, Dragon Ball cards. We've opened up other things on there. So if you guys are into collectible card games or sports cards, definitely check out our other show here on the Late Night Collectors community, Crack and Packs with the Chat. And, uh, you know, over here at Tim Hortons, they're currently bringing yeah. out these Legends collection uh cards right now which is like all the best kind of hockey players over the years uh that they've kind of reprinted for this set so i'll probably be opening up a whole bunch of these on a video as well so a little quick little uh teaser there for things to come but you know this is comic shop talk we're here to talk about comics and we're going to be talking about the comics that we read this week of april 19th 2023 uh, me and Chris, we read comics every week and we come here and we talk about them and give you our thoughts and reviews on the books, show off some of the art, let you know what we thought of them. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We got this show weekly as well as other things that drop. Like I said, crack and packs with a chat. I just did an episode of trade talk. That's kind of where we kind of get together and talk about a collection, mm -hmm. uh, like a graphic novel, like a whole collection of something that we read. And uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff here. Uh, definitely check out the playlist. Spoiler warning, we are going to get into, like I said, some of the things that happened in these books this week because we're going to be talking about them and reviewing them. We try to stay away from big spoilers if we can, but you know, sometimes we got to get into the uh, the nitty gritty of the of the titles here because uh, we want to let you know what we thought of them. So be forewarned. All right, Chris, that all being said. All right, well, cheers, Nico, and uh, let's talk comics. Cheers, let's talk comics. This is not water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some, uh, got some of the flavored, uh, you know, seltzer water here that's uh, got the alcohol in it. Something, oh, nice. something along the lines of that for today. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, first up, I should say, for, uh, up here on the docket. Oh, and stay tuned, guys. After these uh, comics here today, we're actually going to be talking about the July 2023 comic solicitations for Marvel and DC as well. So we'll give you our thoughts and things we're looking forward to picking up in the coming months. So that, that's always some big covers coming up, I think. Yeah, some good stuff, some good stuff. So stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, Avengers Assemble Omega number one, Chris, is the first up on the docket here today. Let me show off your copy. Oh, you got the Galactus. Nice. You got the Galactus. I got the Galactus. This one looks good. It does. This is a nice cover. It does, yeah. So I read this one online. This is, of course, the conclusion of like, I don't know, several years now of Jason Aaron's Avengers books, him being the writer on them. Um, it's basically splitting into two titles for the last couple of years here, Avengers Assemble and Avengers. Um, what'd you think of this, Chris? Yeah, I don't think it was too bad. Uh, no, I think it was a fitting, I guess. I don't want to say it was a fitting end, but everybody kind of got their their time and their time to shine, let's say. And as for the way it ended, I thought, I thought Robbie Reyes of the All Rider was going to have a bigger part in this, but I think it was a decent end. I think they, and they're leading up, I think, into the new, the new Avengers title that's uh, coming out. Now, Jason Aaron has nothing to do with that, I imagine. No, Jed McKay is the new writer of the. Oh, Avengers. oh yeah, yeah. I think we talked about that earlier. Nice. I got my issue pre-ordered, so I'm jumping back on with that. Yeah, but you know, good scenes there where they're trying to hold back. You know, everybody kind of, like I say, everybody got their time to shine and, you know, use their powers to the utmost, let's say. And uh, it's good to see. Yeah, it, you know, it didn't blow my socks off. All the yeah. other, I, you know, as if this is the grand conclusion of the storyline, it was fine. I, I enjoyed it, though. And, you know, I, I did like half it kind of the events of the issue about halfway through it kind of wrapped up and they took down Mephisto and they kind of and then what I liked more about the issue actually to be honest with you was what happened to the characters uh preceding all, all this stuff like the other half of the issue kind of focused on where did all these people go from here kind of thing so like yeah. 
you know, and the art was good, but I really liked how like they kind of set up some like there's always the it looks like there's always the possibility that they can touch on that Avengers assemble group of uh, alternate other versions because yeah, I'm sure those yeah those are going to be out there in some sort of limited series out there sooner or later. I, I bet you, yeah, just because the way they kind of left it, but I kind of like that because they kind of have the uh, uh, what is it, uh, Avenger Prime or whatever the hell his name was, like the Loki guy. He now has like he's kind of like in, in like his nexus of mm-hmm. worlds now overseeing this team of avengers now and it seems like they can kind of dispatch these guys into other because they've all the people that are left in that group have all lost their actual respectful worlds like uh, you know outside of this battle like what ended up happening is like some of them didn't have a world to go back to at the end of this right and and i kind of liked the people that ended up saving the day here because it was unexpected by the end of this too i mean you had the you had thor's mother who was like the um uh, what do you call it? The Phoenix from all the all those years from the yeah, the one million BC Phoenix. Yeah, BC Avengers, and he also had the uh, new Star Brand that was like it started out as a baby in the in the pages of Avengers, and then turned into an old woman by the end of this, and basically it flamed out all of her powers along with the Phoenix here. So you know there was some good things in there. I, I did I did like it as well, like you said, but you know I I I, th- I think it was it was a fitting end, but a, a decent end at that. Not nothing like. You know, like I, I think uh, as big of a fucking event as this was, it seemed very, very simple of an ending here. Like they've been assembling for it feels like ten issues, and then they kind of just took them out here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so uh, there's there's a lot more build up, let's say, than payoff. I think in this event, but I yeah, you know, I think things like this they're just hard to end. You know, you gotta yeah, you don't want to wrap it up, but I guess you have to wrap it up. He's on to other things. It wasn't a bad end though. It was it was good. Yeah, I thought I thought you know it was good, and I, I I really am interested to see where they go from here because they even said like, well, you know, this era of Avengers is done. Like this whole celestial, you know, um, based and whatever like that. You know, that's that like that's not going to be the case moving forward. So they tried to like wipe the slate clean, sort of by the end of this, and it looks yeah. like, you know, they're going to a more classic avengers team i think not like yeah i guess that's the idea you gotta wipe it clean for the new for the new writer you know roster yeah exactly so but yeah yeah not bad not bad i think there i i think uh there definitely has been some great highlights during the avengers assemble series along the way though chris i like the name more stuff here at the end too now he's in prison now looks like like they that whole scene where cap Basically, like he broke free of the like obviously. Yeah, he just kind of staying in the in the chains just because, like, out of honor yeah, or respect for them. But when Cap says, "Hey, oh, hey, yeah, he's just thank like, you," yeah, and he's like, he's like soldier, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. like, and Namor was just like, "No, I should serve my time," you know, because. Uh, Prior to this whole event, Namor was uh, did throw down against the Avengers. Like he was, uh, he was. You know, when he was the king of Atlantis again for a pre- period of time there, prior to all this shit going down, um, he wasn't he was an enemy of the Avengers in this in this title, right? So you know, it was uh, and this kind of whole view of all the people that were on the main Avengers team through the main title, I think over the years was pretty cool to see as well. So yeah, there's some good stuff. There's definitely a lot of fan servicey moments. Let's say at the end of this, yeah. Yeah. So oh, and this I want to talk about. This. <laughs> Um, but as you go through, it starts getting better and better. All these little that's what I mean. Like, literally, once the story was done, like Mephisa was taken out, all the after kind of events, like, yeah, all these little bits, like what happened to Mephisa. I forgot about that. There, he's stuck yeah. with that eyeball guy. The prologue, like, kind of was way better, I think, than the event itself, <laughs> like the wrap up in this. So, yeah, I got to give a shout out to this because, um, I don't know how much you know about this. So, this character is called the orb, this guy with the eye. Okay, now. Jason Aaron, as long as he's worked at Marvel, in every fucking book he's done, he's put this character into at least one issue of any series that he's really worked on. Like, I swear, he's like, he's kind of fit him into everything he's done because he really loves the character. It's like some D-list villain that I think that was a ghost writer years and years ago, like back in the day. Now... For whatever reason, Jason Aaron says he loved that character one from when he was a kid, and he always thought eyeballs like creeped him out, like just the idea that this guy is just basically a big eyeball. So he, whatever he's worked on, he's he's managed to put this character in over the years. So I love that he included. I mean, I think he showed up earlier in his Avengers run too, but I love that he showed up here at the end. It, it just made me laugh because if you've been a longtime fan of the uh, of the of Jason Aaron. 
you would you know that like he loves this character and i was just like that's awesome like at the end of the day he's sitting here with me he's so, for whatever reason he's like oh you're fucking annoying you never shut up <laughs> i said it's Mephisto's punishment for this guy just to be uh there wasn't one line that go, don't you ever shut up? Was, well, I used to have to shut up to breathe, but I don't have to breathe anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead now. <laughs> yeah, so I love this. That was my favorite part of the issue was seeing him. I was like, ah, Jason Aaron. <laughs> and uh, I just heard recently that uh, he his contract, he was an exclusive contract with Marvel for years and years and years. He did not re-sign. So yeah. oh, I don't know what that means for the future of him. We might see him over at DC at some point. You might see him more. He's been doing more things, I think, through independent publishers now. Slowly, you're starting to see that. So I, I hate to see him go. I, I really love a lot of his Marvel work, but he's been there for like as long as I've been back in the comics or probably like 15 years or something. He's been over at Marvel exclusively. So I'm ready to see some other stuff from him. But uh, yeah, so I thought that was a nice tip of the hat that he put the orb in, in this at the end. I was like, okay. Very cool. <laughs> and then, yeah, Ghost Rider looks like survived at the end of the day. He's in, like, I don't know. Yeah, searching all for the parts of his car, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, you know what? After talking about it, I think I might give it a higher rating than I thought just because of that orb shit and everything else, the pro. Yeah. I did enjoy it. So, what did you give this out of five? I think I'm going to throw it. I was going to give it a 3.75, but like I said, I'm going to bump that up to a four. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, no, I did. You know, with, with uh, what's that? The all rider lighting up the the doom planet to turn into his yeah. whatever ghost miner machine. I thought it was pretty good. And Thor use unleash some Phoenix power. There were some good beats in there. Yeah, there were some good moments for sure. I also give it a four out of five. Absolutely. All right, Chris. Another end to a to a series here this week. Deceased War of the Undead Gods number eight. I got my issue right here. Hmm. I got my issue here too. All right, Chris. What did you think of this conclusion, Chris? I know this was a series we both really enjoyed. I think it was, I think it was in the mix for um, even like our top, like I for you, I, I know for sure last year and your top like uh, yeah. gave to uh, you know a favorite of the weeks too. I think it was in your top three, um, and probably one of the favorite things in terms of our DC books out of last year we talked about. So, what did you think of the conclusion here? I think the art here is great, though. Freaking can't go wrong with this art, this whole series. It's, uh, it's just top notch. Mm -hmm. And I think the story, I think the story in the last one was more the battle story, and this is more the the physical story. It's nice seeing everybody come together, but you know there was no like sort of epic battle at the end. You know, like basically they they're all kind of getting together, just chit chat about what they got to do. And Damien is Damien Wayne. That's the Batman there, right? Yes. Yeah, I guess he's got a secret plan, and uh, he has to keep it secret because if he told everybody, everybody would talk him out of it. But there's some, like, you know, you know, I got to see some Lobo in there, so that's always good. Uh, there's some funny lines in there, I think, where oh, it's, is it, uh, where when the Green Lantern sort of pokes fun at Darkseid. Yeah. And Darkseid freaking zaps him with the eyeballs. He's like, oh, well, that's my bad. I should know. What am I doing trying to poke? Guy Hope Gardner. To bear here. Guy Gardner's like, even I'm not that big of an asshole. To, to, like he's like, yeah, that's my that's on me. I'll admit that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's just like, yeah, I know I'm an asshole, but even I shouldn't be bad mouthing fucking dark side. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, but I think if you're looking for epic battles, got to go reread. I guess issue number seven. I thought this would be more epic battles now that they got everybody on side, but uh, it's more just a mental battle, I guess. Oh, I wasn't too impressed. I got to disagree with you there. Uh, I thought it was an excellent end to the series. They had the emotional beats. And not only that, it you know, they had to put a plan together here. Like they had to come up with a plan here to take them down and everything kind of fell into place. There were some unexpected deaths here at the end. I think some valiant effort made and, uh, you know, some heroic moments to follow. And, uh, you know, I, I think I think you have no heart, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> You clearly don't care about these characters. <laughs> I think, I, think, uh, well, I, there, I, mean, I gotta go. This is my plan. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. You got it. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Listen, I, I liked the whole thing with the new gods, like uh, war and uh, and the death, death race, the de sorry, the black racer uh, guy, the de death essentially. Of yeah, essentially death. Yeah, to go there and just kind of pull a distraction and. I, I dug it. I enjoyed it. I, you know, I think I had a good time with it. I thought it was a, a fitting end. I thought there was some good characterization here. 
Uh, you know, I love what Alfred decided to do here as the specter towards the end of this issue. I, I quite dug it. I'm, I'm sorry to see, see here. You didn't love it as much, but uh, I, I really thought it was a, it was a fitting end to a great, great series guys. If you have never read to see, go back and, and check out each installment and think about the, I think there's probably about four or five mini series when it's all said and done for deceased. I think that comprise uh, like are made up of the whole series. So um, yeah, it's, it was really, it was a really great series. I think Tom Taylor did a great job all throughout. And I agree with Chris, great art. So yeah, good stuff. Yeah. But the series as a whole was great. I, I, you know, as the series gives us like a 4.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree there. So what'd you, what'd you, what would you give this issue, though? This issue, I give it a 3.75. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. 4.5 for me. I thought it was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I got to say, the difference here is this one didn't come off as corny and cheesy as the, the uh, let's say, even the, the events of what happened at the end of... Um, it, you know, the thing where Damien sacrificed himself and that other thing that we are Batman sacrificed himself. Uh, what, the Lazarus? That, that was baloney. Oh, not, not Lazarus, pits of Batman garbage. Batman versus Robin, the end of that series. Batman versus yeah. Robin, like in comparison, like that felt like what you're trying, what you're, you're just, you're describing right now is what I felt about that end to that. Yeah. This, Maybe I thought. You just can see, like, you know, if you didn't see that uh, so often already, you know what I mean? All right, all right, yeah. You want to save it for a good one, and you know, you know, especially when it's you know like off canon stories, you can do that. But when it's on canon stuff, and you then basically use the same story again and some off canon, just takes away the the emotional blow out of it. I guess I don't know. I guess Chris is wrong. All right, uh, moving yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> she Hulk number twelve. We don't always gotta agree, guys. That's the beauty of the show here. She Hulk. Well, we can always agree that this is a sweet cover here, a Patrick Gleason She Hulk uh, variant cover. Look, I thought I was getting something else, but this one's good too. Yeah, I'll agree with you there. <laughs> she Hulk number 12. Let's see it. <laughs> but even the whole run of these covers have been freaking awesome. Look at this cover. Look at this one. Ah, can't go wrong with that. I guess there's some legacy issue too. It's uh, 175. Oh. But I guess they brought in the B artist again for this or something. I've been looking. Once I got through this comic, I was looking through and thought, who's this guy? What are they doing? You know, it's always hit and miss with the art in here. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a bit of a, a miss compared to some of the other issues. But the story itself, it's it's a good story. It's not, you know, picking up any crazy steam or steam or it's just kind of a slice of life of whatever her name is, Jen, Jen Walters mm -hmm. and, and her uh, more of her lawyer side of stuff. She's got a room full of all the villains trying to fight her. You know, just kind of going through the grind there. I'm not sure if in this one that she's, she's yeah, she's fighting some guy, I guess some new villain there that always seems to get the best of her. Yeah, this guy here. I'm not sure if they gave him a name yet, but uh, he seems to have a power set that's pretty decent. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I'll probably continue on with this. Nothing crazy going on in here. Right. I think if I had the better artist, I probably would have enjoyed it more. But then a lot of fun stuff. She has some book club in there. <clears throat> and, you know, nobody read the book. And <laughs> I guess she's all upset about, uh, was it the Wasp or Janet Van Dyke? Because she's borrowing her apartment and mm -hmm. she doesn't feel like she's an adult and all this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And Captain America shows up at the end, you know, and he sees the book that they're talking about. And he goes, oh, I read this book. It's a good one. You know, goes, oh. so I guess that was a nice little touch. Nice. But nothing crazy. Uh, I give it. Uh, three point seven five. You know, I thought the story was still interesting to read, fun to read. The same reading as deceased. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> All right, next up we got. I'm expecting more out of deceased. That's why. All right, Wonder Woman seven ninety eight. <laughs> seven ninety eight. Yeah, that's the cover I got there. Nice. So I've been kind of in and out of this Wonder Woman story here. I thought it's baloney for a bit, but uh, I read this one online. Uh, when it came out on the Tuesday, and then uh, I thought this was a great issue. She's here, you know, she's got her tag, her team of whatever, a ragtag uh, of local yokels out there. There don't seem to be too many powerful people in there against the gods. And uh, I guess Hera shows up with her, her uh, lackeys there, and I think, uh, what's her name? 
Wonder Woman basically says, okay, Harry, you know, just me and you, we'll fight it out and see how it goes and we'll leave it at that, you know, instead of having everybody battle it out. And Wonder Woman gets her ass kicked. You know, they have a, that's a decent fight there. Wonder Woman gets her ass kicked. But the big reveal or the big uh, hoopla on this one is that Marvel Girl shares, or Mary Marvel, I guess, there, that's it. She shares, shares her Shazam powers with Wonder Woman and powers her up essentially to like a god level. Mm. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting there. Now that she's a god, kind of takes away her humanity, I guess, or gets her to see things in a different way. The only downside about this is that it's somehow a Lazarus planet tie-in, which takes away from the story. If this was just a story running through, then, you know, boom, I'd take it. I thought the art in here was great, you know, some big, uh, you know, epic splash pages. So that's, that's some of the reasons I went out to go buy this one after I read it. And it is, what, seven six seven ninety eight. Yeah. I think at $800, they are they're relaunching this after that, I guess. With, is it the new number? It's, it's starting at number one with the Wonder Woman, right? The Tom King, yeah. Right. Yeah, with the new one starting at number one again? Yeah. Ooh, so you're cutting down a 800 legacy number back to number one, so. The art looks great here, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's another one. Top level there. And then there was even a backup, I guess, with uh, Mary Marvel in it as well, like at the end here, it looks like, uh, that tied into that, or? Yeah, I forget what happened. I think Mary Marvel... Our Wonder Woman shares some of the like godly uh, artifacts, let's say, you know, like Hermes boots or, okay. you know, some like gloves of strength or something. And they fight some dummy. Yeah. Nothing big. Okay. But yeah, as a series, you know, I thought it was a great comic. And I'd, I'd give this a four out of five. I'm looking forward to the last two issues of this, too. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to jump on for the relaunch um, for sure. I think I'm going to check. Yeah, that. I'm looking forward to that relaunch, too. It's, uh, it sounds interesting. Yeah, no, I thank you. Yeah, no, I um, I um, uh, I'm looking forward to it as well because it's been a while since I've read a Wonder Woman um uh, comic. So, all right, uh, next up we got the Forge number two. Uh, that's this like uh magazine sized issue. Greg Rucka and uh, Eric Troutman, Mike Henderson on art. Um, you know because of the way that you got to do with your like uh pre-ordering guys, you got to usually, you know, uh, order months in advance of comics. So you really got to like determine whether or not you think you're going to like something. And unfortunately this was a mistake on my part. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, very much dislike this book and I think I got two more issues still coming. Um, it sucks because like, I like one of the writers on this. Like I, I guess he's writing it with somebody else. I'm not really very familiar with uh, most of his stuff has been hit for me in the past and I really enjoy the art, the, the artist on this, like, but it's just not working for me. I mean, the first issue, I wasn't sure. And this one kind of just solidified it. I mean, you know, again, the art's good, but a lot of the art in this book, because it's in space and the way that it's written and the stuff they're focusing on, he's just drawing a lot of like, I don't know, terrain and like stuff in space and not really like a lot of character work stuff. And like there is sometimes throughout but, you know, they even have the mech, mech suits in this, and you don't really see them all too much in, in those for most of the comic. And it's just really a lot of, like, sp space, like, Marine Corps-type jargon-type shit going on. Like, I could see, like, you know, I, I, at times it's like, okay, yeah, tone it down. You don't have to give me the coordinates of this fucking area. And, you know, you know <laughs> I get they're trying to make it, like... That's what I mean. Like I read, I read war comics and like a lot of the time, like I, you know, I like when they use obviously like li lingo and stuff like from the day, like whatever war they're talking about or like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that I, I, I don't enjoy that kind of stuff at times, but like, there's a, there's a limit to how much you do it. I feel like, and like, and, and there's not really much storyline being told other than like some tactical type stuff they're doing in this and there's no character work really going on like i don't really feel like i know these people so i don't know like they get it the one cool thing that happened in this issue is they i don't know they get attacked by like some space worm type things and it takes out one of the woman's hands and there's always like some even in the last issue there's like some sexy time kind of like goddess type women that are all like in this scenario at times so like you always you always get like a little side boob action type stuff going on in here, which, you know, again, I like the artist. It, it always looks good in that sense, but I don't really know what it has to do with the story either. So like, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not digging this. This is not for me. Like I, um, 
yeah, and like I said, you're going to hear me probably bash it two more times because I have the issues with reordered. So I'm trying to, you know, think of some things to some positives to the story that like I can point out to you guys in that sense. But, you know, it might be more up your alley than it, it was mine. So I'll give it a three based on the art uh, story. I would probably give it a 2.5, but I'll give it a bump up for that. I, just because I'm not I'm not that interested in this, whatever this story is that they're, they're telling here. All right, Punisher 11, Chris. Yeah. One more issue to go, and this uh, is the penultimate issue here in this 12-issue maxi series of The Punisher, also written by Jason Aaron. What would you think of this? That's another tale of two stories here. Yeah. It's been a lot of time in his past, and uh, whatever's going on at, uh, at the here and now, though, that's for some crazy stuff. Yeah. So you have uh, Doctor Strange really stepping up here. I guess he's... He's the one that's going to have to be fighting him because it's all sort of demons and, mm -hmm. you know, and mystic sort of stuff. And the way they kind of trying to squeeze the the beast out of the Punisher and uh, just, you know, his his battle. I guess he has a good battle there with Wolverine, Captain America, Doctor awesome. Strange. That was awesome. That was good stuff. And, you know, the whole time he's almost saying, you know, look, guys, just relax here. I'm done. I'm not even using a fraction of my power. And they're saying, hey, buddy, you got to stand down here. We got to take you in. We got to figure some stuff out. The Captain and, America uh, moment loved the Captain America moment because, again, like that tracks. If there's anybody he has four yeah. out of these heroes the most is Cap because he's a soldier. You know what I mean? Like he's like, you know, stand down. He's just like, I am. Like he's like, I'm done. Like he keeps trying to say to everybody, like, I, I, yeah. I told everybody I've won. <laughs> like I'm, I'm good. Right. But like, you know, he's clearly not. <laughs> so he's, he's still a threat. Right. So they're just like, yeah, stand down. But that whole moment of him walking up and then they even kind of gave you the flashback moment that we've seen previously in this series as he dressed up as him as a kid. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's, that was a great moment for me. I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that, you know, that makes a lot of sense to me. Like the, that would be the one person that he would not throw, throw a punch on. You know what I mean? Like he was like, yeah, know, he had to fly away from cap because he's like, yeah, I, I, don't worry. I'm done. Right. So that was awesome. And that stuff with Maria finding out what the Punisher really is. And I, that doesn't really sort of ring true for me. Like, like she didn't know what the heck's going on, but anyways. I don't know. I thought the art uh, was was great throughout. Um, I did love him finally throwing down against the heroes. The back, the the like like Chris said, you know that it's a, it's a it's a story of two stories really because we still get all that flashback stuff. Um, you know, I guess the whole the big uh, reveal in this one that was uh, I do want to mention it that makes it interesting. So spoilers once again, guys, I, I guess that's never probably been explored. I don't think I've ever seen it before was the fact that when they were at that park that day, obviously what that made the Punisher as a result of him, his family and his kids getting killed, she was going there to divorce him. So I think like, you know, that's an interesting kind of new tidbit, uh, I guess thing that's added on to the legacy of this character, whether or not you like it or a fan of it. I thought it was at least interesting I don't think that's ever been a thing. Before. I read there's another major, another kind of storyline where where Frank Castle was going to the park that day to say he wanted a divorce. Now that makes sense too. That that makes sense too. I mean that that that, that would track as well. I would think in terms of like knowing like what he's about because he was trying yeah. to. You know what I mean? I don't know if I've read that one or if I've just forgotten. Yeah, it. I, mean, I just read like you know read it kind of just in the storylines. Okay, but I didn't I didn't read the actual story. Right. Maybe I thought this was a surprise at the end where she freaking starts. Maybe she's shooting magic bullets there and he's taking them or we'll see where it goes. Yeah. So what'd you give this? Think he's going to be dead at the end of this? <laughs> it's possible. It, you honestly, like if you want a shocking moment at the end of this series, that would be it. I just hope if that's the case, they just remove him from the table. Like, yeah, that's, that's what I think the plan is. Just take him, you know, kill him. Well, they are. Know, they have confirmed that he is coming into the movies or the shows or something like that. What's his yeah. name? I played him from The Walking Dead there. I forgot his fucking name. Yeah, um, John, John Bernal or something. John Bernenthal. He, it is confirmed that he is supposed to be coming back to reprise his role as him. So, like, I think um, whatever direction they're going to go with the character, like, they probably will bring him back, I think, at that point in time. So he could be off the shelf for, like, I just hope it's, like, you know, at most a year if they're not going to do anything after this because we've already had, like, an absence of this character. Yeah. 
I hope it's only like a couple of months from now and they relaunch it with something. You know what I mean? Like I really, I really think they should have a series out if they are planning on bringing him back prior to that happening. But I think like the way you got to go with this is yeah, he, she ends up getting killed and he's going to res be resurrected at some point and something's going to, whether or not that's going to be a change to the character or a new direction or whatever, like, I guess we'll see time will tell, but um, I think you're right. I think he is going to die in this next day. Cause that, that, that would be the shocking conclusion to this. Yeah. Story. Right? Like, what else is he going to do? Like, like he's going to become the Punisher as we know him again by the end of this? Is he going to come back? Yeah, it doesn't look like that's happening. And it right. doesn't look like Marvel even wants that to happen, you know? I I hope they do, though. I mean, if this was this... Well, I hope they want to just put him off the table, like, even if it's two or three years, and when they can bring him back as the normal Punisher without all this sort of backlash or hoopla, then uh, then that's what that's what I hope for. I think that would be the best outcome. I'm just going to be upset if that's the case, if this whole series was just an excuse to kill him and then not, not do anything with it. Right. Like, cause that no. would, that's what I mean. Like, I think like, you know, that's the, uh, say what you will about like, you know, how PC society is these days. Like this character needs to be around. I'm sorry. Like yeah, some form of this character, I, I would be very upset if they don't do anything with him past this. Right. So I, 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 I they they have to they have to with him coming back to the show or the movies or whatever they they're they're going to whether or not we're going to get the punisher we love you know from the that we know and love i don't know what's going to happen there if the guy's going to come back and be a pacifist then get the fuck out of here with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't want that then they should just kill him here if that's the case right like i just don't want to see that but uh hey what what can you do i guess we'll see man i just i'm they're probably going to kill him though. I think this next issue, I agree with you in that sense. That's what I was thinking. And I, uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> What'd you give this? Uh, if I give it like two, I give it like a 4.25 and a, you know, a 3.5. Yeah. I think you can imagine which stories get the 4.25 and I, which gets the three. I'm going to round it out to a four for me, a four out of five, because like I, you know, I, I like the stuff I liked in it, I liked a lot. And like yeah. said, stuff I didn't love in it, it was okay. But I, I, I'm basing that off of like, you know, the, my love for that stuff. Like does the, 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 the current day storyline that's been happening in this series. Yeah. It's always okay. Oh, I slept in the tent and he didn't come in. Blah, blah, blah. Was, come on. <laughs> that crap out of here. Yeah. So there you go. Punisher 11. One more issue to go. Nightcrawlers number three. This is the end of the, the last mini series, I think, of the sins of sin of sins of sinister mini series that have come out. So, uh, what did you think of this? As for the Nightcrawlers, I think this one sort of made the most sense. Thank you. Yes, exactly. I agree with you, one hundred and ten percent. Yeah, I agree with that. This this made the most of this thousand year jump. I think out of all the mini series, where the other ones lost me, as we yeah. saw the show here, this was like, hey, remember when this happened? I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> you know, what I mean, like. <laughs> this crazy shit that happened he kind of took advantage of that like like we, we we don't have time to tell you all these stories of things that happened in these thousand years but he made the most out of this whole like time jump absolutely i agree with you where where this yeah, the first two the first two in this issue that i didn't understand what the heck was going on yeah and there's all this you know this whatever cult like speak that they're saying and this one here i think it, it kind of revealed that whatever the mother righteous she's no godlike figure she was just a chump there was you know, when they're saying, oh, let there be light. She was sending him into whatever this force field that she's trying to drain slowly. Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah, so I don't think this was a very bad, I don't think it was a bad issue. You know, it was a good read. You know, I'm not upset that I didn't buy the whole thing. But uh, if this was a one shot or something like that, then I'd have probably got it. But I thought it was okay. I like that. What's that? Uh, the juggernaut still for, what, a thousand years? He's just been yeah. blown through space. <laughs> guys might going nuts by now. Well, well, that's what I mean. Some of the concepts in this last issue of where these characters currently are, I thought were really interesting. And like, whereas I don't, I feel, I don't feel the other third issues of those mini series really took, yeah. took advantage of that fact. Like, you know, they tried to make sense of, I think everything that happened, but they failed in doing so. Uh, the Nightcrawlers mini series, I was lost like the first two issues. It was the complete opposite. Yeah. Right. And then I thought, I thought they kind of righted the ship, at least for this issue, for this last one. I mean, this was probably still my least favorite of all the miniseries, but I felt the other two kind of dropped the ball by the end where this one kind of took advantage of that, of, of, of everything that I guess they had done prior to this issue. And I think because this one might be the lead up to the sins of sinister dominion. It is. It is. So well, really got to put everything together. Like that's a cool thing with the ghost rider as a Galactus or something. And then, yeah. 
Yeah. And he yeah. freaking shoot the juggernaut through his head. So come on. Yeah. And that's all Destiny's doing because she saw this in the past or in the future. That's yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah. No, I dug this. I dug this a lot. Um, it was it was good. And then this whole thing with the Banshee at the end and uh, it looks like uh, Moira, a stacked Moira McTaggart. I don't know what the what, I don't know I don't know what happened to her in between like these thousands of years or whatever. Oh, no. But she this whatever this artist tried to draw her as. I'm like, is that black? <laughs> like, is that Black Widow at first? I was like, why does she look like? You know, I've never seen Moira like look so uh, <laughs> curvaceous. Let's see here. I was like, whoa, uh, okay. And then she's like, you know, she when she. When they said it's Moira, I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, it's not what she looked like a thousand years ago. I think she got some plastic surgery done or something. Uh, maybe the future is different. Who knows? <laughs> the nanotech or something. Yeah, I guess. So what so what'd you give this one? I'll give it a four. I thought it was a good read. Uh, yeah. I, I was going to say 3.75, I think, for this one. Uh, but still good. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, next up, we got Superman number three. Yeah, got this one here. Nice, yeah. So what do you think of that? Well, from the, I guess from what happened in the last issue where those parasites, I guess, got into his bloodstream and, you know, you thought Superman kind of got zombified. Mm -hmm. I guess he's still able to maintain control and thought it's kind of hokey the way they, yeah. the way they got, the, I guess, the, to attract the zombies, you know, like have that flesh bomb or was it static or whoever's who's the electricity person there that kind of drew in all the, all the parasites. Oh, uh, live wire, live wire. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that's kind of hokey there. And then they, I, was, I thought it was a nice twist there to get the, the parasite prime or the main parasite to eat all the other parasites to become a, as a food source. But, I don't know. This one kind of lost me a little bit. Yeah. Um, again, uh, yeah, you're right on the money here for what I thought, too. This was a little bit of a disappointment, this issue. I thought I was enjoying this series. And then uh, with this one, I was like, I'm like, it was OK. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it, and, and, and the one thing I heard about this series is they said they were going to try to do like smaller arcs, which I can appreciate. But I do feel like this was kind of, uh, yeah, not as great as the lead-in issues. I, I thought this was uh, just, like, mediocre, this one. I, and, yeah. And, and uh, I was disappointed by that. And it actually even made me reconsider whether or not I'm going to continue buying these physically now. Because I, I've i been picking this up. I've been enjoying it so far. But then with this issue, I was just like, it's going to be kind of like this. And maybe I can just read this. I might just read this online. I'm like, I don't know. Because Superman's a hard sell for me anyways. But... I did like the ending. Like I like where they left it with um with Lex Luthor and Superman, like how he kind of like agreed to like be part of this whole kind of yeah. project thing he's got going on with the with the you know and that he's gonna he it seems like he's believing him that he might be trying to help for once. I don't know what's happening there, but like I did like how he kind of left that for him, you know, he gave it through through into yeah. his there, right? the watch and uh yeah no i kind of i liked that that kind of like rang true i think to some of the heart of superman but like otherwise yeah i don't know this this issue wasn't really doing it for me like the first two i agree with you i don't know what what it was but yeah the art's still amazing i think the art's great. yeah especially when they have superman draw or when they drove draw superman's clark kent yeah. i think he looked great there he's like freaking still massive there it's like how can you know he's not superman but yeah it's still uh good stuff yeah and like you say, I don't know, I might be on the fence too, but because I was going to kind of pick this up and drop action comics, maybe I'll just end up dropping both now. But I'll give it, I'll give it a bit more, a uh, bit more uh, leash, let's say, or a few more issues, see what the next star stories are all about. Yeah, I think I've pre-ordered the next two issues at least, so I, I'll at least give it that. But moving forward, I don't know, well, I guess we'll see. Um, but, but I do like the fact that... Um, the writer I heard him mention that they are going to try to do some one shot issues. They are going to try to do some like three issue type. Yeah. If they can kind of keep it moving at a fast, faster clip like that though, that might keep me invested because like, at least we're not stuck with it for six issues or something. If yeah. You know, like where it's going or something's up and it's like, Oh man, I'm stuck with this. Yeah. Cause like I hate <laughs> that nowadays, like most writers write for the trade in that sense. Cause sometimes you get into this fucking bum ass arc and you're like waiting for it to end. And yeah. 
it really it can really deter you from dropping a book, right? In that sense, like I'm not sure, not deter you from dropping it. It could deter you from enjoying it to the point where you just drop it, right? So, uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, would you give this out of five? I give it a three point five. Same. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, we're on the same wavelength there on that one. <laughs> I don't know why it, why it wasn't as great, this one. So uh, next up, Batman Superman World's Finest number 14. Got my issue here. This is uh, this. I'm still really enjoying this one. Did, what, did you like this or or what? Yeah, I just, I've just been reading this online. I guess it was part of the cuts. I'm not feeling too bad that I'm not that I cut it, but it's still, you know, great looking book. I think the story's decent in there. I like this Metallo, or it's Metallo. That's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, not Metallo. The what's the Metamorpho? Sorry, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. I do like this Metamorpho character. Yeah. And uh, there's some good stuff going on here. And I like the dynamic between them that they don't only really, they don't really trust each other, or they don't trust Superman, or they still think he's a bit of a shifty character. Yeah. And. You know, I guess there's a big reveal at the end of this one. I I, I love the scene with uh, uh, Green Arrow uh, just talking to Bruce Wayne. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Oliver Queen ca- talking to Bruce Wayne. Yeah, and he's trying to get into technology all of a sudden, and Bruce Wayne's like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "You're you're not down with like tech, like tech. What do, what do you mean you want to invest in my company, right?" Like, yeah. and like. You know, because like Oliver Queen's like a bleeding heart liberal, like <laughs> like the way they've always written that character. So the fact that he was talking all like savvy all of a sudden, I'm like, what yeah. the hell? Even I was like, that's weird, right? <laughs> like, and then like it seems there's some sort of conspiracy going on with all like the rich billionaires that happen to be in the DC universe or something. So I thought I thought that was interesting. I liked like the whole mystery aspect of this. I like Metamorpho's attitude. Love the Dan Moore art. I, I I think I still think this is a lot of fun. This book, I'm really enjoying the vibe, the vibe, like, you know what Mark Wade's doing with this, like the overall vibe of it. So, yeah, I'm uh, not feeling like Mark Wade's gonna be getting spread pretty thin in the near future. He will be. I but he's doing a ton of stuff. I I'm I'm here for it. I'm okay with that. I think he's a great writer, and I think he has got a great voice for a lot of these DC characters. And like I said, like I think a lot of his stuff, like the stuff that he's trying to do, is this. Uh, you know, it seems like it's in continuity, but with the with the vibe of um, like old older DC like type, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, it, it seems like they're trying to be true to the spirit of who these characters are, and not really add into too much of the current continuity stuff by still kind of like that. That seems like the what he's going for with his. Yeah. Stuff. I, I I I can appreciate that, and you know, if he's gonna go write some other type of stuff like like he's doing with like the Superman Black Label stuff, that's cool too. You know, so. Um, that seems like it's going to be more in line of like a kingdom come type deal, that one or whatever. Right? Yeah. So yeah. What'd you give this? Uh, and then this was cool at the end, this whole, like, you know, kryptonite. Yeah, and then this guy can freaking turn into kryptonite. Yeah, that Not was good cool. for Superman. That's for sure. What'd you give this one, Chris? I got a 3.75 easy. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Uh, no, no, four, four, four. four. Yeah. I can say you push that up to five. If, if I bought it, I'd probably push it up to a four. Catwoman 54, Chris. Yeah, I don't think I bought this one either, though. I thought I had it on the, the pull list, but either way, it's uh, still a decent story. You know, I got Catwoman in jail, and I think Punchline's entering the picture, so that's always fun. And uh, I guess the, the Royal Flesh Gang are in jail, so they're sort of battling each other. But in this issue, I thought it was kind of common knowledge that Selena Kyle was Catwoman, but it doesn't look like that's the case. I don't know if you know anything about that. No. Yeah, well, anyways, I guess it's not the case because nobody knows that uh, Selena Kyle is Catwoman. And I think they're planning out some breakout, and as they're breaking out, that's when Punchline's breaking in. And then uh, Catwoman or Selena Kyle and Punchline have a little uh, a little back-and-forth conversation. That's kind of fun because it, uh, it, it, it goes back to the, whatever, the, the Gotham game where, or even was it in Batman, wherever that Valmore guy dies and she's kind of given him the she's given her the you know the jabs about that and i think they end up cutting a deal somehow because they're still going after all the the gang bosses in uh, alley town so see where this all goes it's a fun you know no i wouldn't say this is a fun story but it's an interesting story i guess about the i guess the backwoods of uh alley town there and see how it goes art's decent in this i think they got some good covers coming up though so I might be around for a few more issues. The art looks good. I like the art on this. 
uh, you know, I, I, I do think it's about time that punchline showed up too, after all the, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, I think that's been, or did she show up previously? I can't recall. Cause I remember there was a lot of talk about her showing up for a while there, but then I guess they started this whole prison arc type thing. Right. So, yeah. And I think it's all just mixed up in that punchline Gotham game stuff. And it's just good. This is all part of a story here. It's not, you know, they're not spitting this out into another series or something. We're going to go buy some other baloney stuff. So what'd you give this out of five? Yeah, I'd give it a, I got a 3.5. Yeah. Okay. Gonna, I think I bought it. I thought I got a freaking variant cover, but uh, I, guess, I guess not. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up, we got Nightwing 103. Yeah, Nightwing 103, this cover here. Yep, same one. What do you think of this? I thought it's fun there. At the, don't they go to hell in this one here or something? Yeah. And then uh, Raven's got to put the psychic blinders on for the greatest reason, though, too. is like, if I didn't put these on, you'd see these people here. And you're heroes. All you're going to want to do is help. And, like, you can't help these people. So I thought that was a great line in there. And, uh, I, I was, you know, I think we were talking about this the other day about how the Nightwing title itself is sort of, you know, it's it's more of an open open sandbox, let's say. You can do a lot more in here. It's almost where, whatever he wants it to be, like the tone, honestly. Like, yeah. He, yeah, but it's not kind of tied down to one thing. It's not like he's stuck in Gotham or something. He's in Bloodhaven. He can do what he wants in Bloodhaven. It's not Gotham or, or it's not Metropolis, mm-hmm. you know. So I always think it's, uh, it's fun stories here. I mean, I laughed a few times, like out loud while reading this issue. I thought some of the moments and the dialogue were a lot of fun. I I think it's just a ridiculous thing of them going to hell. Even the whole thing of him like rewriting the contract for the demon at the end, like, oh yeah, I'm adopting her type thing. That was that was kind of thrown out there. Yeah, and I go, oh, that's, that seems like it's binding. It's like, oh fuck, you got me. <laughs> You know, and uh, the ending here, which I guess again, these spoilers, guys. I'm gonna spoil here. This last page. Kind of seems like it's going to be an interesting, fun idea going into the next issue too. This is this is just a super fun book, and and like I I just like and like and like I said, like it's just such 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 a malleable kind of character in the sense like he's kind of just doing whatever he wants with this. Like in his book, it seems like, and I thought this Titan storyline was going to be a little get a little long in the tooth here, but I I, I yeah. I've it kind of keeps getting better for me. Like I'm actually yeah, it's working its way in there. Like I say, I was kind of a. Worried about, you know, everything was, you know, the title was running pretty smoothly before all this stuff. Yes. And I thought this was going to be too much, but uh, I think it's fitting right in. Yeah, no, it's, it was. And almost getting me excited for the Titans now. Yeah, exactly. I know. Because if this is kind of what the tone will be for that book, if that's maybe what he's showcasing. Yeah. And have these kind of fun offbeat adventures. Uh, you know, maybe even exploring some of the backgrounds of these characters more because obviously this is more of like a Raven esque type story they're telling here because of the fact that she's the d- a daughter of the demon, right? Um, this was super fun, yeah. And you got like a super Nightwing here at the end of this. Uh, this yep. kinda, the power up, see what he does with it. You no, know, and it, and it kind of the suit that he's donning is kind of like his classic Titan suit here, almost, right? Like I, I yeah, man. So I, I, I thought this was fantastic. I had, a, I had a lot of fun reading this book, and I was like, while reading it, I'm like, wow, this is much, much better than it has any right to be. I think at times, <laughs> it's, like, oh, yeah. it's continued to be really enjoyable. Well, it is the best issue it's been in a while, for sure. Absolutely. So, what'd you give this one? I give it a. Um, I know you talked me up. I, right? so I'll give it a four point two five. I'll give it a four point five. This issue, yeah, excellent issue. Uh, next up, we got Hollow's Eve number two, Chris. Yeah, I just read this online. Just more I'm interested in what's going on. I like seeing the Beyond stuff. You know, the story's kind of fun, but nothing special happening here. I think that there might be a Spider-Man appearance in the next issue, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, because I got to tell you guys, like, the first issue, we both kind of took a flyer on it, read it online. I, we talked about it here. I think we were pleasantly surprised because we were like, oh, this is actually much better than we thought it was going to be. Like, we kind of were both, like, not really sure what it expected this book. So I guess we came in with low expectations on that one. This issue it couldn't be of more straightforwardness uh, of a story at all. Like, this is <laughs> like, such paint by numbers type, like, okay, yeah, this happens and this happens. And this, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, wow, this was just very like toad the line type bullshit in this story I, it wasn't bad by any means it was just very very straightforward of, of it you know you know whatever you would expect from this she's tracking the guy down that she turned into a werewolf she's trying to do the yeah. right 
he puts on a different disguise. This woman is investigating her, the Beyond Corporation. It's just like what I could have basically told you what was going to happen in this issue without even having read it. Like if I was going to have to guess on the most basic storyline, that's kind of what I felt of this. But it wasn't bad by any means. It's still, I think, a decent series, but. Thank God it's only a mini series because there's no, I don't think they would have had enough uh, juice here to kind of continue. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's say, right? So, yeah, and I don't regret not buying this, but I'm happy to read it. Yeah, same. I'll, I'll probably finish it out. Like, it, it was fine. So, what'd you give this then? Nah, 3.5. Same. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got, oh, sorry. And, you know, uh, our last book of the night, I should say, is uh, Amazing Spider Man number 24. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I know we've been bagging on John Romita, but I don't know what happened in this issue here. These first few pages, I thought it was just freaking super awesome. I had to look back to make sure it was not a guest artist or something. <laughs> Hold on. And, you know, all the kind of throwbacks to what happened in the first issue, where, you know, they, they, I guess they told Spider-Man that he's safe in there, and he's he's there messing around trying to steal some mini fusion reactor, and they try and, you know, reads there. I like that line there with, uh, with him and... Reed goes, oh, what are you doing, Spider-Man? Why didn't you just ask me? He goes, oh, can I take it? He goes, no. Because that's why I didn't ask it. He, goes, he <laughs> put them webbing in his eyes and takes off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love these Fantastic Four moments. I mean, they, but Spider-Man's been part of the Fantastic Four in the past. He is basically an honorary member of the Fantastic Four. So, like, the fact that, you know, it, it, it just gels so well, him with these characters. I think it just, it, 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 that was my favorite part of the issue was him mixing it up with them. And John Romita Jr., if, the, if he just wanted to draw a comic about the thing, it, just eating a sandwich, like, I would read the shit out of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was like, like you said, it's the best his stuff has looked in, in some time here. And uh, although, you know, I'm not a big John Romita Jr. hater like some, but I, uh, I think he, he's a perfect artist for the thing. I wish he would do it a thing ongoing after seeing yeah, it. Yeah, but when you compare the stuff like this issue compared to that tombstone stuff, it's like freaking a different person drawing here, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I can, I, I can agree with that. I can get with that. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and uh, who's the writer for this? Uh, Zeb Wells? Yeah. 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 And like with this kind of, uh, I know whatever the way he has it where time is of the essence, you know, like every, every minute that, you know, whatever Spider-Man spends in this universe, you know, years could be going on in the other one. I think that's just great that uh, he has to do that. And that's why Spider-Man's like, you know, he doesn't have time to explain to everything to anybody what he's doing. And he's like, you know, even with, with Norman Osborn there, who's, you know, whatever, I guess it's a good thing that he's kind of, turn to the leaf and uh you know and it kind of exp it'll allow spider-man to do whatever he wants just to try and get in his good graces or he feels so guilty about all the stuff he's done yes and i thought that's it just kind of makes everything interesting but the big reveal there i thought to be you know i guess whatever's going on in that apocalyptic world with mary jane stuck in there is no reveal in there everything was revealed already it's like he goes there oh mary jane great and then boom his kids appear out of nowhere again yeah. I thought there'd be more of an explanation as to what happened, but no, nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. This issue though, that being said, I think uh, he's right in the ship for me. I, like I said, we, we, I kind of had the same thoughts when we talked about it a couple weeks ago, where uh, starting with the last issue, this kind of turned a corner for me, this current storyline. And I think it's continued with this one. And uh, with the next issue being a big issue, like you said, you've been teasing with number 25. I guess it's going to yeah, be I think 25, 26. Yeah. Even up, those are some bigger issues. And yeah, the rumor has that I hear a lot of buzz out there. Somebody's dying and her name is yeah. got red hair. I'm, uh, I just got worried there for a couple of issues at the start of this story, but I, I'm really enjoying it yet again now. Um, you know, I, 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 I never lost faith, but for a, for a moment there, I was like, oh, no, like what's going on? Yeah. Uh, Cause it, cause when he just, first went in that world with that, that whatever that Yotep or whatever that God is, mm -hmm. and they spend a whole issue on that. It's like, what the heck is this? Right. But then you have the follow from that when he's come back, he has a fight with Cap. He has the, whatever, you know, he's mixing up with Fantastic Four. Looks like he's had to mess around with Iron Man and some other people. Like, you know, we don't even haven't seen that. He just mentions that in there. Yes. Or he sent a uh, black cat out to steal some stuff for him. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. And I'm down for this whole soap opera business in here again, you know, Absolutely. of what's going on with him and Mary Jane and, uh, you know, the, is she going to die or not? 
Absolutely. No, I agree. It was, it was a great issue. So what'd you give this out of five? Yeah, it's still, it's still no five-star comic, though, I'll tell you that much. No. Um, I got a 3.75 because this didn't oh. really, really reveal anything in there. Wow, I actually, yeah, I thought I'm going to give it much more than you, actually. I I, I quite like this. I give it a 4.25 of this one, actually. I just so. like it. If you say you're going to reveal stuff, you better reveal stuff, not freaking stuff I've already seen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris blows no punches, guys. This guy, he's like, hey, you better come correct. <laughs> it's like, this is some of this baloney. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I still love the comic. Nah, I want know. more. All right. I hold this up to a higher standard. Yeah, well, that's true. After last year, it was our, like our favorite comic of the year, pretty much. I think, like collectively, um, even though I think I gave it to uh, maybe do a power bomb in one of my categories, but I think like overall, in terms of like how many like I think these this, we gave this. I think it was just tied for me. I think for my my most favorites of the week last year with do a power bomb, and like for you, it was like yeah. We, you picked it like seven or eight times. So yeah, we're big fans of this book and I agree with you. If you're going to hold it up, hold it up to its high standards of last year, even uh, from the launch. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's getting back up there for me though. No, I think it's good. I've, uh, I've, I've enjoyed the last few issues and I'm looking forward to the next issues. Like yeah. back in the tombstone days, that wasn't really, no, I, I'll, I'll buy the next one. Hopefully it gets better and better, but yeah, all he did was get his ass kicked. <laughs> Which is fun too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, guys. So now uh, that's going to do it for the books we want to talk about this week. Now we're going to talk about the new comic solicitations that have come out for July 2023 before we get into what we're looking forward to reading next week, as well as our favorite of the week here. So let's uh, let's take a look here. Uh, let's we're in the light there. We started out in the daytime. It's dark yeah. now. We're <laughs> in the late night part of the chat. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let me just share my screen here, guys. You want to do Marvel or DC first? I've seen DC. I don't know if uh, if you want to look at Marvel first. I don't care. I guess we're going through both, so it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. All right. Let's do Marvel. All right. Okay. Perfect. All right. So this is once again shout out to ComicReleases.com. That's the site we normally use for these uh, solicitations. They do a great job of uh, compiling all this stuff. And if you guys are into collected editions, uh, you know, as they are more focused on that, uh, they do put those things first and foremost on the pages there. And, it, you know, any of the, like the more premium hardcovers, omnibus, this kind of thing, bigger collections, they also change the dates as things get changed and uh, get pushed back and stuff with delays. They, they're, they're updating constantly in terms of the release dates of all of the collected edition stuff on this website. So if you're a big collection, a uh, collected edition uh, purchaser, like I am as well, this is a great resource, this site. So, uh, but yeah, so we're looking at the issues though, things that are coming out in July, we're looking to pick up or read. Uh, so first up ultimate invasion, number two of four. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Very much looking forward to this. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting, uh, hellfire gala variant. Okay. And we're getting, we're getting to, Yes, that's right. Hellfire Gala, I believe, is this month again because it's an annual event. So, yeah, we're going to see that here in this list too. Amazing Spider-Man number 29 and 30. Yes. Yeah, we're sticking yeah. with this. Wow, some nice covers. Ooh, for me. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Ed McGinnis on pencils on this issue, Chris. I know he's a favorite of yours on this series. Right. Oh. Wow, these Hellfire Gala. Oh, man, I might have to buy three there. <laughs> all, all three of those covers are baggers. Fuck. Jesus Christ! What are you doing to me, guys? Come on! That's Mark. Is that Marco Cicchetto? No, that's Sona. It's SD the DNA one. Oh, okay, so that who's Mark? This is Marco Cicchetto. Yeah, this is Marco Cicchetto. That's nice. David Nakayama is a Hellfire Gala. Yeah. Okay, Marco Cicchetto is the other one. Yeah. Well, I guess Mary Jane's still alive then. I don't know. Yeah, very nice. You got some Doc Ock action here. Is that Gleason? No, one oh, of his arms are still uh infatuated yeah. with Spider Man. There's Nick Bradshaw, yeah. Oh, wow, those are nice. Fuck. Yeah, there's some nice covers there. Oh, and 31. You're getting three issues this month. Ooh, yeah, that second cover, another the wedding cover. of the year. Look yeah, like well, freaking whatever. Uh, Tombstone, oh, Tombstone, yeah, and his buddy, uh, Robbie Thompson, yeah, yeah, all yeah, right. Greg Land, your boy. Yeah, I get that cover for sure. There you go. 
as long as it's not an incentive cover. Yeah. How about this, Chris? Marvel Age 1000. Looks like another. Yeah, I got to pick that up. Looks like another, ver uh, like an anthology of sorts. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably get fucking sucked into buying this too. Yeah. Fuck. There goes 10 bucks. Look at these covers, though. No. Again, like which one? At least one isn't like, you know, heads and tails above another. You know what I mean? I don't. I mean, there's some good ones here, there's though. There's a lot of good ones. Which one you, which I'm. Kind I have of, to look at them, but they I all look decent. I'm kind of leaning towards this one, I think. I like this one, the layout of like the look at the hall. <laughs> I kind of like that one. I mean, this is cool, but it doesn't really like this is really good, but it's just those. Yeah, but not for like if it's a Marvel Age, whatever. You know, if there's a bunch of heroes, take all the heroes. I think this is Greg Land again. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go with this one personally out of all of these. I, I like this one the most here. I think that nice covers though. Yeah, so this is a uh, yeah nine ninety nine one shot. A bunch of great artists and 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 writers doing kind of like uh, a commemorative issue includes contributions from some of the most story creators and Marvel. Never know. There else could be some sort of a uh, key in there too. You never know. Yeah, those these these are fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this. Blade number one. No, I might read it online though. I do like Blade, but I've never really read a lot of Blade. But a Blade ongoing, maybe, maybe I'll read this online. What the fuck? I don't know. He needs to be an image or something where he can freaking slice the hell out of people and have blood flowing everywhere. You know, that's Frank Miller. That one. <laughs> okay, I was like, what? Okay, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess we'll see. Elena, Elena Casa Grande on art. Oh, she's the one that did the Black Widow series. That was really good. That artist. Oh, okay, that might be good. Brian Hill, he's he's written some good things. Also a black writer. Uh Incredible Hulk 180, Basimiel edition. That might be that's the first uh oh here we go. 181, the first Wolverine appearance. So that that might be a good Basimiel to grab, actually. That's that's pretty cool. Those, are, those ones have some pull to them. And then we got the Phoenix issue, X-Men. Ooh, I might get that one. Incredible Hulk number two. Uh, I'll be probably checking this out. Yeah, I'll be checking this out. They look great. Yeah. Are you going to be picking this up? Oh, you... be, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I might just pick it, be reading it online. I don't know. Uh, all new Marvel now point one number one. No, I'm not going to be grabbing this one. This is again, this is like one of these Marvel point ones. I think this is like them trying to say about things that might happen in the new year. Oh, yeah. no, this is a reprint. Yeah, no, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, it's a fast meal edition of that. Yeah, I think I read that originally when it came out. <laughs> Loki number two, no. Black Panther two, no. Moon Knight twenty five. I, I did get Black Panther number one in one of the. Okay. That okay. one of the cool covers there. Any good? Did you read it? Or? Well, I haven't, I haven't got it yet. It's pre-ordered. Moon Knight twenty five. This an is an art term. Yeah. yeah. That's a nice cover. This is. That an could be. Uh, that could be what I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, it is the 25th issue. It is oversized. It is a 999 one. Oh, another Frank Miller. It looks like Frank Miller's doing some covers this month. Okay. Got to pay some bills. I mean, that's going to be probably a sought after variance then because uh, the, the, he does have his fans as much as I don't love his style now compared to back in the day. But uh, he does have his fans. And also a Moon Knight miniseries coming out City of the Dead, one of five. I mean, I'll probably end up reading all these in trade or online or something because I, I I currently read the Jed McKay Moon Knight in trade. Uh, although I will say I just read volume three recently and it was the weakest out of all the volumes so far. I'm still sticking with it. It wasn't horrible, but the first two were better than the third volume, the storyline that they were telling in that. So we'll see where that goes. Captain America 750, another anniversary big issue here. Another 799 book here. Uh, I might pass on this one. Unless they got a cool cover, but those covers ain't grabbing me. Looks like this is going to be, I guess, moving forward past the uh, yeah, whatever the, past the events. Cold yeah. War. The Captain America mourn their fallen. I mean, he's on the cover here. I, I'm thinking like there's been um, rumors going around that it's going to be Bucky who ends up getting killed out of this event, and he could be a bad guy right now. So it's very yeah. possible. And you see him and uh, and uh, you know Sam here. So like, I'm pretty certain it's going to be Bucky who bites the bullet at the end of this event. We'll see. Captain Marvel Dark Tempest number one of five. No. No, maybe cover. read it online. Oh, maybe a buy that's, that. That's a good fucking cover, man. These these yeah. Hellfire Gala covers are bangers, man. Ooh, that's a nice one too. Yeah, yeah. this one. That's a yeah. They're some good covers. Um, Dark Tempest. Yeah, but I have no interest in reading this. And Nascenti, though. Uh, it looks like again another older creator coming back to characters they may have been associated with. Marvel Zero. What's this all about? 
Marvel. Oh, I think that's all the the free comic book day ones. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Why? <laughs> well, I guess we can't get them all. It's. I guess, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I got a hookup for that. I, I'm juiced in. I might have talked to you about that hookup there. <laughs> all right, we'll talk. We'll talk. Uh, Deadpool, Batter Blood, two hundred five. No, no, Rob Liefeld for me, but. <laughs> There you oh. go. That's Rob Liefeld coming back to Deadpool, though. What if? Dark oh, there's some new what ifs. I might read these online. I think three of them. I might read definitely read these online. Yeah, I, I'm always a huge fan Maybe of. Maybe buy them, but Dark, I think Loki, Dark Loki and Spider Gwen. I mean, these aren't really the creative teams and the characters aren't ones I'm mostly interested in, but I do yeah. like. I do like the what if concept. So yeah, maybe I'll read those online. Then you got X Men Days of Future Past Doomsday Number One of Four. Again, looks like they're, uh, you know, doing oh, yeah, uh, revisit the old story of uh, what happened during that time. Yeah, re revisiting some, uh, that was the Hellfire Gala, Gala one, revisiting some old storyline type stuff here, it looks like. Yeah, so there we go. X Men Hellfire Gala 2023. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, man, look at that. That's a good one. That's, Phil Noto. that's the A cover, right? Yes, the Phil Noto covers the A cover. Oh, that's a, that's a, Sick cover. That's the one I'm grabbing. Yeah, get out of here with it. Oh but yeah, sure. that's a Chris Paul Campbell one. This one, but yeah, not, Ooh. not. Uh, no, Gene Grape. She's not, calling me there, but uh, I'm gonna go with the A cover. Yeah, not cheesecakey enough. Yeah, this gotta go with this one. Oh man, yeah, eighty pages, one shot, eight ninety nine. Yeah, definitely. I love the issue from last year. That one shot. Yeah, yeah. X Men twenty four. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll get the other one. I don't like this one as much, but yeah, I'm gonna be a cover for sure. Absolutely. Invincible Iron Man number eight, a Hellfire Gala tie in. Gonna continue reading this online. Yep. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice cover, too. This one. Yep. Nice. Yeah, definitely gonna read that for sure. X Men Before the Fall, Sinister Four number one. What's this one shot? Interesting. I might have to pick mm. this up. I might pick this up. It's a one shot. It is written by Karen Gillen. Yeah. I might, have, I might have to grab this. And I do like this cover. Yeah. I might have to grab this one. It's a one shot. Fall of X. I think this is a prelude to Fall of X. Yeah. I might well, have so many preludes for this Fall of X, man. This Fall of X better be big. But this one, this one, though, I think because it's written by Karen Gillen, you know, he just. Yeah. It's like the main storyline Fall of X. Yeah. This is, if you're going to grab any of the ones we've seen so far, this is the one to grab, I think. Yeah. And I think it's going to touch on some of the things from his um, Immortal X-Men. Yeah, I think I'm going to pick this one. Yeah. Storm number three. No. Nice. Again. Is that uh, who's doing this one? Is that Russell Dodd? It is Russell yeah. Dodd. Man, this guy needs to get back on interiors, though. I mean, like, I you see, this is the problem with these guys. He's becoming a cover artist. He hasn't yeah. he hasn't done interiors since Jason Aaron's Thor, which was wrapped up years ago now. Oh, this is. That's a shame if he doesn't do interiors anymore, but he's a banger artist, a cover artist too. So I guess July's going to be an expensive month. Yeah. <laughs> X-Men red number 13. No. Uh, yeah. No, I'm good on that. Uh, Immortal X-Men number 13. Yes. Continue reading this one for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably get that one over the other one. Is that the Hellfire one? Yeah. 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 I'll probably grab that one. That cipher, though. Rogue Gambit number five. I might continue reading this online, but yeah, not picking it up. New Mutants Lethal Legion number five. No. Wolverine 35. Weapons of X conclusion. Yeah, so I'll continue reading this. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Might take out Beast. And uh, there is some X-23 Hellfire Gala. Oh, Mahmoud Asrar. It's a nice one, too. X-23, Deadly Regenesis. No, you guys uh, may have heard what we thought of the you first know. issue. <laughs> the Excellent, number five. Yeah, I'll be picking this up in trade. I read the first issue, and I, I enjoy these series, but yeah, I'll pick it up in trade. X-Force 42. That's one of those series I think it just reads better in a chunk. Uh, no, I'm not reading this, but yeah, no, I'm good on these ones. Yeah, okay. Ooh, that's a nice cover. James Stoko, huge fan of his. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> So much detail. Venom 22. Now, Chris, uh, I hate to break it to you. I actually seen some of these solicits already. So now I got Al Ewing, the series writer, the normal series writer on this for this issue. Okay, number 22. Yeah. Some cool covers. Yeah, I guess you'll be sticking with this. You, you pick up the Hellfire Gala variant of his son. We'll probably grab that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cool. 
I hate to break it to you, Chris, but it looks like Torin Grunbeck, the one that's on. No. <laughs> is writing issue 23. I don't know if she's now once again taking over another book, Chris, but the woman who seems to be jumping on all the titles. we re- Whoa. <laughs> what's going on there? Whoa, what's this? <laughs> you might have to pick up this Torin Grunbeck issue. Uh, maybe it looks like I'll be reading some more Torin. <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a Virgin variant cover. Well, okay, maybe I won't then. Oh, it's not Virgin. No, that's a George Perez one. Who's drew this one? George Perez is dead. This isn't him. Who's that? Is this Ken Lashley? Or is that Jim Chung? I don't know. Connecting variant cover by Philip Tan. I don't know. She looks like she's sunbathing with a, a Venom. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what's going you're getting on? some sun too. Whoa. I don't know what's happening there. I don't know who's the artist on this. It's hard for me to tell. I don't know who the character is. Yeah, I think it's a Philip Tan one, which would be a regular um, connecting variant that it looks like. Yeah. New vision of Toxin. I don't know. I don't like seeing her on more books. I'm, we're not a big fan of Torn no. back here. She keeps taking over fucking titles I'm reading. She's a writer of Thor, and I don't know what's going on here. But anyways, we'll see. Chris, I don't know if you're going to be reading that, but that cover might steer you uh, towards it. <laughs> Extreme Venomverse number four and five. No. What? Maybe. What? It's oh, there it is. <laughs> you have to venomize. Oh, I might have to read that online now. <laughs> uh, Edge of Spider Verse number four. No. Spider Man India. No. Oh. Nice cover, though. Yeah. Hollow's Eve number five. Yeah, we'll probably continue with this one online, I think. It's good covers, though. There you go. There's the, uh, the gala variant right there. What? She's going to the gala? Come on. I mean, I don't, I don't think these people. Well, are I guess you've got some ties in there. Yeah, but I don't think they're all going there. I think it's probably like maybe. I mean, like a lot, maybe just re- re- envisioning them if they had a, a they had a. Well, she's tight with Madeline Pryor. That's true. That's true. And it is, and it is an event where they let other non mutant people in. So yeah, yeah. So maybe yeah, that is the one time a year they'll allow them to come and hobnob with them, right? So, and Krakoa, Spider Man number ten. Are you sticking with this, or what are we doing here? Yeah, I'll probably stick with this. Yeah, I think so. This is another electoral issue. It looks like this electoral battle is going to be going on for a couple. Jesus Christ, how long is he going to fight electoral for? I don't know, but that's a nice cover. Yeah, I'll probably get the the variant there. Spider Gwen's Shadow Clones number five. We got one of I'm her. Kind of reading this on uh, while reading it, but Greg Land. You've been reading it, yeah. Silk. Uh, Miles Morales, Spider Man. Looks like he's got a Hellfire Gala one. I'm I've not reading. Oh, that's uh, that's, that's an homage. Like homage. That's an homage. Yeah, that's an homage to the first Hobgoblin issue. Yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty cool, actually. I like that. Yeah, but that I might be one to buy. Yeah. I, I'm not reading this anymore, but that's cool too. Yeah, that's pretty neat. I do like the like the the whole idea of them trying to put some fashion into these guys, though. It is kind of neat. Some of the creations they the outfits they come up with. Red Goblin Six. Is is this ongoing? What the hell? Six? And this is the last issue. I mean, that's crazy. Doesn't I could be leaving that summer of symbiotes or whatever. Who knows? Yes. Venom <laughs> Sector number two, five. There's a lot of fucking symbiote books. I'm not interested in any of this. Called the yeah. Carnage three, number three. No. Web of Carnage number one. What? <laughs> More starting. <laughs> I think you said summer of symbiotes. Whoa. Ooh. A lot of See TNA happening with these symbiotes. Look at that one there. Avengers Beyond number five. No. I am Iron Man number five. No. Avengers three. Yes. Yeah, still continuing with this one. That's not a great cover though. But I'll no. this one, but Groot three of four. It's a cool cover, no. but no, I'm not gonna read that. Warlock Rebirth number four or five. No, again, older creators coming back for it though. Uh Guardians of the Galaxy number four, maybe. I might maybe. be reading this online. Yeah, yeah. I did like some stuff in the first issue. That's kind of cool. Nova. That's kind of neat. Uh Doctor Strange number five. Yes. Let's see this one. Scarlet Witch at the gala. Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four number nine. I don't know. I mean, I've been reading this online. Maybe. Mm, that's a nice one. An Iceman. He's rolling up in a in a Chevy or something. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, Hellcat number five. No. Scarlet Witch six. No. Let's take a look at her cover there, though. Oh, that's like I Dream a Genie or something. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. 
Okay, no, no gala. Yeah, no special there. Ghost Riders number sixteen. No, there's the gala one. <laughs> yeah, could have done better with that. No, Cosmic Ghost Rider. No. How is there three Ghost Rider books out now? It's representing all of them. It looks like here, except for the one that just like happened in Avengers. Clobbering time number five. Yes, this last issue of this miniseries. This is the first issue was a lot of fun. And I guess every issue is teaming up with somebody else. Yeah, it sounds like that's like it's almost a Marvel team up, but uh, it's just not yeah, called. Uh, Marvel two and one was the thing book. Yeah, so Marvel two and one is basically what this is. I know I, I that was lost on me on the first issue, and then someone said it to me. I was like, oh, I'm like I thought it was gonna be Hulk in him the whole time. So I'm good with that. That that's kind of yeah. cool. Thor Annual number one, and it's written by somebody else other than uh, the Core and Grunbeck. So and there's no Thor issue this month, so this might be a sign of. They're changing the writer up of Thor, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I thought I read something. Something might be previewing something in here. I don't know. Well, Thor Annual, which I probably oh. not going to pick up physically. I might read it online, but uh, yeah, maybe I might buy that A cover. It's not bad. It might be time to wrap that up if they don't put on a new good writer, though, because I think I'm done on the the Thor and Grunback stuff. She Hulk number fifteen. I'm surprised there's no variants. That's yeah. still a good one. Daredevil and Echo, no. Daredevil no. 13, yes. Well, I think Echo might have lost her uh, Phoenix powers. Yeah, she did. Yeah, I think she did in the Avengers, right? Deadpool, what? Is that Phantom X? It sure is. At least his clothing is. Nice. Uh, Planet of the Apes. So, yeah, now we're getting into this territory. Aliens, Star Wars. Yeah, it's uh, the off-brand stuff. Any Yoda variants for the Gala? No? Okay. We <laughs> should do that. I know. I don't understand why they don't. I'd be okay. fucking buying them if they were in there. You had a freaking Yoda at the Hellfire Gala. Right. Okay, so moving on to DC Comics solicitations. Stay tuned next week, guys. We'll probably talk about some of the other publishers that haven't dropped their solicits yet. Um, but we'll do the big two today. Now, in DC in July, it looks like they're they're all most of their books are being taken over for the month as these night terror one-shots. So I guess this is what, Chris? Do you know anything about this? this is like them all having nightmares, the characters? In yeah, this? basically it's like some new villain that shows up and, you know, and enters their dreams and shows them some twisted stuff. Okay. So could be are... interesting, could be garbage. You know, Lazarus Planet sounded great, but that's going to be a big pile. I think I'm going to probably be cherry picking certain ones to read online for this. I might just be skipping the whole Night Terrors month for that matter. Like, I don't know, man, but some of these covers are freaking smoking. So I agree there. So let's, let's take a look at them regardless here. Night Terrors First Blood number one, uh, which I guess this maybe sets the Maybe just, yeah, it enters the or... Yeah, it looks you know like what the storyline is, I guess. Batman, Introduction. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman find the body of one of their earliest enemies inside the Hall of Justice. Their investigation takes them past the land of the living, beyond the land of the dead, and directly to a new villain called Insomnia, who uses his powers to engulf every single hero and villain in their own dark and twisted nightmares. Yeah, this is the setup then. The only way to save the world is to call for the help of an unlikely hero, Dead Man. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, maybe I'll read yeah, it. doesn't book. sound bad in the solicitation. Oh, I might pick this up. I might pick this one up. Whoa. Oh, Jay Lee cover. Ooh, I might have to grab this now. Yeah, I like his. Robert, when you look through them all, there's always fucking one of them in there. Oh, it's characters. The characters you just want to see. I mean, I'm a big fan of Jay Lee. He's got this guy like, gothic looking art. I really like his style. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. Then you got Night Terrors number one proper. One of four. Okay, so there is going to be a main miniseries. Okay. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe I'll check out the mini series. So it looks like Josh Williamson is also doing that one shot we just talked about prior to this. Uh, well, that's fun. <laughs> no, dig now, die later. <laughs> I like that. That's a fun one, like an old school one. That's cool. Uh, Night Terrors too. Oh, so I, I I guess it's a weekly event through July. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll read the main event then. Main event. Maybe. Eh, it has supernatural characters, and I love. I'm a sucker for those ones, so yeah, I might have to check that out. Oh, that's a throwback to uh, yeah, throwbacks of uh, death of the family. Death yeah, of the family where they killed the uh, fucking uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Jason Todd. Robin. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Night terrors. Ba oh, so maybe it's not. Maybe it's biweekly. Okay, so that's two issues throughout this month, anyways. Night terrors. Batman number one. Okay. So I guess they're all going to have twisted visions of their nightmares, essentially what these nightmares would be for each individual character, I guess, in these series. Wow, some scary looking covers. Uh, Night Terrors, Detective Comics, number one. 
Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. Like Starro, or like a mutant Starro or something. Uh, uh, Night-, Night Terror's Nightwing number one, Becky Cloonan, Michael Conrad writing it. I don't know the artist. Okay. Some cool ones for sure. Night Terror's Poison Ivy number one. Like, why not do this in October though? I don't understand. Like, yeah. some, it's like the summer thing. <laughs> like, weird, but okay. Uh, Poison Ivy number one. Uh, and it looks like a lot of these one shots are with the writers that write these series normally, it looks like. So, like, yeah. I guess in place of some of their ongoing series that month, you might get Night Terror instead, like a one shot. The thing is, though, these are all $4.99 regular price comics, like outside of, uh, and this is one of two. So I guess this is July yeah. and August. So this is their summer event. Huh. That's weird. Okay. Night Terror is Catwoman number one. Again, written by the writer, Teeny Howard, I think, who writes the ongoing right now. Awesome. Nice covers here. That's cool. Okay. Night Terror is Harley Quinn number one. Yeah, so I guess I'll be getting this. Yeah. This is I'm expecting some better covers, though, for this. Yeah. One of two. Yeah, so I guess these are the yeah, it's two months this event. Okay, so two months in the mini series and in this month, two two in the next month, it looks like and all the one shots, or I guess two parters are between these yeah. two months. Night Terror is the Joker number one. I'm sure this one will be good because just because it's the Joker. Looks like you know, you pretty do some pretty fucked up shit there. Ah, uh, this is a homage cover to the detective comics issue with the Joker, what's made up of bats. Uh, which is a jock cover, very famous cover, and uh, that was the first issue Scott Snyder wrote of Batman and the Death of Comics. Night Terror's Robin, number one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, most of these I'm not going to get uh, or read. Yeah, I don't think I'm good at that one. Night Terror's Superman, number one. Yeah, Tom Riley on art. Well, that's cool. Tom Riley is a great artist. Although, like, he's more of like a... Again, a cla- I think he would be better for a more upbeat issue, not like a scary one, but okay. Uh, you know, Joshua Williamson, the writer of Superman, he's going to be doing that, of course. Night Terror's Action Comics, number one. Are they going to go with like all three story type thing in this? It looks like it. Power Girls in this. Okay. Uh, Night Terror's The Flash, number one. Yeah, I, I'm mostly out on most of these, but cool covers, though. Fun to look at, anyways. Uh, Night Terror's Wonder Woman, at number one. Are you, are you picking up any of these, Chris, or like are you? Like I said, my cherry picks up about. Yeah, there's still some few good ones to come. Still, like maybe with maybe this Wonder Woman one. Yeah, Night Terror's Titans number one. I don't know the uh, art. I don't know. There's the a team. ton of these ones. Yeah, I don't know the team on this one really. These are all these are all two issue series too that we're looking at, guys. Here, Night Terror's Shazam number one. There you go, Mark Wade's doing this one. I am going to be reading Shazam, so yeah, maybe. Like, I might just stick with the titles I normally read that I might be, you know what I mean? Like, especially yeah. placing them that month. But if it's an addition to, maybe not. Night Terror's Green Lantern, number one. Looks like they all have, like, this red and black variant one. Uh, Night Terror's Black Adam, number one. Holy shit. Jeremy Hahn, the guy who's writing and drawing this, he does a lot of really great... Um, horror stuff though so like i'm sure that's going to be really good the visuals <sighs> angel breaker number one who the hell is that is that part of this event she was in uh batman i don't remember her in batman or she was like raza or talia al ghul's like number one hench woman i guess okay Ooh, is it tana number one yeah okay she was the one that's like, uh that might be getting me here yeah, these super. If we're gonna get into some of these more of the dark DC characters, like the uh, GLA dark ones, ooh, nice cover. If that's not a, that's yeah. not a variant for sure. Yeah, this might get me too. This one, I I do like Zatanna. We don't see enough of her. Punchline number one. I'm sure you're picking this up. Let's see. I just figured there'd be some good covers for this. I know you like her, uh, the character somewhat too, right? That's a good one. Night Terror's Ravager number one. No. Nice covers. Oh, that's yeah. a that's a James Stoko uh, on one in twenty five. Of course, that sucks. Fucking one in twenty fives kill me. Yeah, Hot Girl. Even worse are the exclusives. Oh, that's cool. Hot Girl's getting one. 
One of six. No, this is a hot girl series, oh, I think. Okay, okay. I was going to say this isn't part of night. Terror. Maybe now they're getting into the the series, like. Yeah, so that that's it, I think, for the night terror stuff. Uh, at least the series. Okay, some some art stuff there. Nice, that's cool. That hot girl's getting a book. Nice. Uh, world's finest Teen Titans number one. I'm gonna probably be reading this one online, but I am yeah. gonna be checking this out. This is Mark Wade expanding into his uh world's finest type uh vibe stuff that he's got going i guess the same tone of the uh, world's finest batman superman but for the titans uh yeah I'll, I'll check that out online at the very least tales of the titans number one no uh adventures of superman john kent yes i've been reading this online this has been good i think it's five of this is the injustice storyline right yes five of six yeah this is the mini series so yeah i'll, I'll continue Not bad. i might have to read that one I, I think you you would like it. I think you would. I think you should jump on. Like it's been two issues so far. It's been good. Yeah. Uh, super. I I I'm at the point where like I wish I picked it up in issues. To be honest with you, like, and um, it doesn't seem very connected to his first series that he did with Super. Uh, like with John Kent. Um. So like, I'm gonna probably pick up the trade of this when it comes out. Like it's it was really it's been really good. Steelworks number two. No. Batman the Brave and the Bold three. I'll, I'll be I'll be reading this online. I'm not gonna be picking up because it's an anthology, but uh, I will yeah. be reading this online. I think. Uh, well, it's too much of this freaking uh, world's finest, brave of the bold now, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I like that they're trying to go back with some of the throwback classic DC types. Yeah. You know I mean, like, I think it's a good place to be. I, I think for DC, honestly, the Vigil, no Spirit World, no City Boy, no. Trying out some new characters here uh, for a while, but Batman Beyond, Neo Gothic number one. Oh, Batman Beyond's back. Okay, I I won't be grabbing this, but I know Batman Beyond has its fans, so that's cool to see they're yeah. doing, doing another. Uh, <clears throat> this I'm picking up. Harley Quinn, black and white and redder. Yeah, this is a good cover here. If that second cover there is uh, yes. yeah, if Gil that's not uh, I I kind of like ratio. I like this one here. This one more to be honest with you, but. Nice covers, yeah. I um, this originally was a digital first, the first mini series. This is a Harley Quinn anthology with again, like all like different. Yeah, they got Chip Zdarsky, he's doing the story yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like they did the first one as a digital first series. There was a first, there was another Harley Quinn, black, white, and red, and it never came out in physical issues. It just came out in trade, and it was digital. Yeah. That trade is one of the best anthology, and I'm not big on anthologies. I say here on the show all the time. That was one of the best anthologies I've ever read. Like the level of talent and really good Harley stories in that was really fucking good. Like I have the trade paperback of it. And if this is coming out in issues this time around and they're doing another one, definitely going to reread this. Like that was, they had, that was very good the first one. So yeah, I'm definitely going to check this one out. And this one as well, we and Chris talked about this already. Superman, The Last Days of Lex Luthor, number one. Absolutely going to pick this yeah. up. This is it. One of three dark, uh, sorry, uh, one of three uh, mini series of DC Black Label. They're gonna be six ninety nine issues, but yeah, this is these look. This is gonna be great. Sandman Universe Special Thessaly number one. No, Batman White Knight presents Generation Joker number three. Yes, yeah, I'm gonna continue. I know they might pass on this one. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll continue with this. Peacemaker tries hard. Yes, number three. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the, a good cover. Yeah, I think the tone of this is gonna be great. So I'm looking forward to that. Batman Inc. No. Batman Adventures Continue Season 3. No. Batman Superman's World's Finest number 17. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how the fuck Dan Moore is continuing to draw this. And, and Shazam. This guy's like must be the fastest artist out right now. It's crazy. I, I don't know what's going on here, but yeah. I'm enjoying the series. Danger Street. No, waiting for the trade. Didn't love the first couple issues, though. The Dark Knights of Steel 12. Wow, the finale. Fuck. So, Chris, this gives me some hope, though. It says here in the solicits, the shocking finale, dot, 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 dot. But is this truly the end? Question mark. Yeah, it's well, not. Spoiler yeah. alert. It's yeah. not. <laughs> it, I don't think it's going to be. I don't know, but I'm okay with that. DC yeah, I'm okay with that, too, because I think it's a great series. Same, same. DC Ruby 6, no... Uh, Justice Society America 7. I'll probably continue reading this online like I have been. I've been enjoying it, though. It's been fun. Uh, Looney Tunes, no. Mad Magazine, no. Multiversity, Harley Screws Up the DCU, no. 
My Greatest Adventure Fast Meal Edition. No Static Shadows of Dakota. No Superman Lost. Are you dropping this? Or I know you've been reading. I'll it. probably still read it, but I think I have been buying it. Okay. Nice cover though. Yeah. Batman Scooby Doo Mysteries. No Waller versus Wildstorm. No. And Wildcats Nine. No. Wow, so that's it. So, yeah, it looks like Night Terrors are taking over all of the main titles for the summer here. So, I don't know. Yeah, uh, give them a, you know, I'll probably the just, a break. Yeah, I'm either not going to be buying much this month or I'm just going to I'm just going to be picking up the titles I normally pick up that are being replaced for Night Terror uh, for that month. Like Batman and like, you know, Harley. Like I'll probably pick up those ones, but probably you know, I'll probably might check out some other ones online, but yeah, that's going to do it for the DC solicits for uh, July. So some big stuff, some good stuff coming up um, as well, but um, I'm, you know, it looks like the, the stuff that I, they've been announcing that I was anticipating was going to drop throughout the summer. I think me be trickling into the fall. It looks like some of these titles I've been waiting on. Cause uh, there's some stuff I didn't see present in the solicits there right now. I felt like that should be there. So yeah, I guess yeah. we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, so that's going to do it for the new solicitations for July 2023, guys. Some things we're looking forward to checking out. Uh, Chris, what are you checking out next week, though? Next week, we got uh, Daredevil 10, Hulk 14, Mary Jane Black Cat 5, Sins of Sinister Dominion, Thor 33, and from DC, then we're getting Action 1054, Harley Quinn 29, and Vanish 6 from Image. Wow, guys, like between this, between stuff I'm picking up physically and things I'm reading online, it's going to be the hugest week I've had in a while next week. Like I'm talking like 15 books. This well, is that's what I'm buying and who knows what I'm going to read there. I'll see what's yeah, out. Yeah. And, you know, and we got some plans next week too, Chris. So I think we'll be recording this on another day as well as uh, we'll get Friday night, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, uh, this is the list, guys. Get ready for this. This is a big list. Biggest in a long time. And I think it's just because a lot of things are wrapping up and we're also delayed that are coming out next week for whatever reason. So like if, for whatever reason, it's like uh, everything's coming out at once that I've been reading or online or otherwise. So Harley Quinn uh, 29 uh, is coming out next week. Uh, the only physical DC release that I'm picking up. Anyways, these are things I'm actually picking up. Clobbering Time, number two. Daredevil, number 10. Doctor Strange, number two. Hulk, number 14. That's the end of that. Mary Jane and Black Cat, number five of five. That's also the end of that series. That feels like it's taken a long time. Yeah. Sins of Sinister Dominion, number one. Also the end of that. Strange Academy Finals, number six. Also the end of that series. So there's a lot of endings here happening here. So Thor, number 33. TMNT last Ronin last year is number three. Uh, actually, yeah, that is come out next week. There's a lot of things here too. I know you also don't read Chris vanish number six, really looking forward to that yeah. and things I'm reading mm -hmm. online. I might try out green arrow. Number one, uh, it's a mini series mm -hmm. unstoppable doom patrol. Number two. I really oh, yeah, definitely read that. Yeah, I really that was fun. The first one. Absolutely. Really enjoy the first issue. Ambassadors. Number three comes out next. Oh, week. Yep. I'll yep. read that. Local man number three, Chris. Which we'll probably one? read that. Yeah, that was a good issue. I like that. Maybe, maybe even buy it if I find it. <clears throat> a series that was supposed to come out last week but was delayed because of a printing issue is coming out next week. It's World Tree number one, the new James Tynan series from Image. It's supposed to be really fucking good. I've been looking for it. I heard there were some error uh, issues that came out or something. That's why some people ended up did getting their issues last week. It's shops that obviously don't give a shit, but they told them to send them back because. Uh. There was, it was a very dark issue. Like, apparently, the coloring that came out, like, oh. you could barely see. Yeah. Something. Okay, so it wasn't, like, yeah. yeah. It wasn't a big deal, but but I didn't get my issue. So, yeah, World Tree number one next week. Uh, Iron Man number five and possibly Captain America symbol of truth because it's the part of the crossover that's going on. So, yeah, it's, like, a huge week for me next week. We'll see. It should be, you know, hopefully a lot of good stuff to talk about, too, as always, guys. Uh, so, really looking forward to that. All right, Chris, your favorite book of the week. I think I could guess, but let's let's see what you picked here. No, I'm going with Wonder Woman. No, that's what I guessed. The way oh, you're... okay. Yeah, that's the one I went out to I read and I bought. The way that you talked about it, how you were surprised by it, and you like had to go and grab it. I assume that to be the case. Yeah, for sure. That's that's good, man. That's awesome that you you know, I like the times you're not expecting something, it comes in under yeah. right. So uh listen, I mean between for me this week is between two books. This was the runner-up. This was so enjoyable, guys. 
This was so much fun, but I got to give it to Deceased. He stuck the landing for me, guys. Deceased, War of the Undead Gods, despite what Chris said. <laughs> I really enjoyed this ending to this series. I think he stuck the landing. I thought it was a... I think I can't wait. I hope they come out with one of those big omnibus hardcovers that collects the whole series, and uh, I'll have that on my shelf one day, hopefully. So that's Deceased. End of an era, man. I, I've been I bet Deceased was like a gymnastic routine. They would have landed, and then he took that step. You know what I mean? Well, listen. They landed and freaking planted and put their hands up and boom. Okay, that's 10, 10, 10 all around. But it's no event. Uh, that's it's enough no, to take it away. No Avengers assemble the combination of like fucking 10 years worth of storytelling of them assembling for 10 issues. <laughs> <laughs> the prologue stuff was good, though. I'll take it back in that sense. I did like a lot of the prologue. Yeah, they should have just ended that in the whole, uh, like the Omega or whatever that was, should have been just be what happens to everybody. Like that, you're not going to be seeing in the main storylines. Right, right, right. So, anyways, Deceased where them dead. God's number eight is my favorite of the week. Some good stuff this week. Really strong week of uh, of books. All right, well, that's going to do it though. This uh, for this week, guys. We will see you next week for another fun filled episode. Lots and lots of books to talk about next week, as as he, as we just mentioned. Chris, thank you as always. He's this is always a lot of fun to do. And all right, thank you, thank you for doing all this all the time. Of course no i love doing it go leafs go guys let's see another by this time next week i want to see the uh series uh over <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we'll see you guys next week later <laughs>